Hello, everyone, and welcome to the A Quilting Life podcast. Today's episode is airing on Monday, February 15th. If you are watching on YouTube, you will notice that we have a special guest today. I will go ahead and tell you who that is in case you're just listening on a podcast platform. So anyway, Chelsea and I are actually on one side of the table together. And across from us, we have our good friend, Vanessa Gertzen of Lella Boutique. She is a moda designer and she writes books and patterns. She is a DIY expert, I think, in her <laughs> house. I've seen some of her projects. Amazing renovations. Uh, we're just super excited to have her as our first guest, and we've been talking about it for a while, and it all worked out today. So welcome. Welcome. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. <laughs> oh, thanks. Yeah, how, we, for months, probably, been yep, talking. We're like so happy to have you and just to be able to be here and share so many things about you that I know that listeners are going to love. So it's going right. to be so much fun today. And we right. promised you guys that it would be a really special episode. That's so right. So we hope you enjoy it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So we actually, since we have Vanessa here, we had her bring the quilt for the wall and the table and the ladder. And she also brought some of her fabrics to share. So we're actually just going to ask her to tell us about the quilts that she brought and the fabrics, and we'll just kind of let you tell us about those. <laughs> okay. Well, the first quilt that I have up here on the wall is called Spring Fling. This is from my folktail fabric collection, and this is what's currently in shops. Um, so this quilt is made with a combination of fat eights, fat quarters, and half yards for the stems and leaves at the bottom. Um, I would say it's intermediate level um, skills. It's It combines a lot of like half square triangles and easy corner triangles to make the flower shape in the stem, but sort of a geometric look to it if you can't see it and are just listening. Um, the quilt here on the table, this is from my smoke and rust fabric collection. The quilt is called Mountainside. And this collection is going to be arriving in shops in April. So pretty. This yeah. is, I think, a fat quarter quilt, but we'll link it up so you can look up the information for all of that. Um, on the ladder over here, we have a couple different ones. The one on the top is my diamond dust quilt. And that is um, one of my favorite scrappy kind of quilts. You can make it with a bunch of charm packs. You can use mini charms. I think I also wrote it so you can use fat eights, um, but that is one of my favorites and I have plans to remake it soon. Ooh, exciting. And then below it, I have one of my brand new patterns that just released um, this month actually. And that one is Kaleidoscope 2. Kaleidoscope 1 is made with a jelly roll and this is made with a honey bun. So oh, it's a okay. little bit of a smaller block and a lot more of them. Um, but it's just, it's a uh, sort of like a log cabin type of construction with a, a twist, I yeah. guess, on it. And that's made in my new Christmas morning collection that will be arriving in shops in May. Oh. I love that collection. Uh, yeah, I love all of these quilts. I, w I was so excited to see which ones you would bring. Oh, and thanks. I just love them all. The quilt. Do you remember who quilted that? Some of them, or um, I believe um, Caitlin at Knot and Thread. Okay. Quilted Spring Fling. Okay. And then Natalia Bonner did oh. custom quilting on I Mountainside. Can tell. Okay. Amazing. Yeah. It's incredible. Yeah. Yes. And then I believe Marion Bott. Uh huh. Quilted Diamond Dust. Okay. And then, let me look. Oh, Natalia Bonner also quilted Kaleidoscope too. Okay. So I just got that one back. Oh, fun. Oh yeah. my goodness. Yeah, I love the effect that Kaleidoscope gives. I remember the first, when I saw the first one, I'm like, whoa, that's kind of like cool to look at. It gives that kind of like cool visual. I love Thanks. That. Yeah, it has two different blocks and they're made reverse of each other. Yes. So they kind of give almost like a An marble... Yeah. Kind of effect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love awesome. that. Awesome. Yeah. And then here Beautiful on the quilts. table, yes, on the table, we have a, a fat quarter bundle of Vanessa's Christmas, Christmas, Christmas morning. morning. And she actually brought the 
the sales what the sales reps use to show shop owners with all the different prints. Yeah, these are actually if you're watching on YouTube, these are the cap sets. And so this is what the moto sales reps will bring to a shop to um, present the line to them to see if they're going to buy it. And so I think it's really, really cool that she brought these, um, especially because I get to see the prints up close and personal myself. <laughs> I love this collection. I think it's awesome. Both of your Christmas collections are beautiful. Uh, so yeah so we'll be able to put pictures up of them oh yeah allowed to? okay because yeah. i'm yeah. not sure how well they can see the ones on the table but okay we'll put, yeah i'll pop it up we'll get some okay. pictures and also uh you will be able to find links to these patterns to vanessa's shop uh in the description below the video so right. we'll have a link for those as well billy will put those up and that way you'll be able to find these fun patterns and any others that she has available in her shop so Oh, and this is probably a good time for you to tell them about your discount code that you're going to Oh, have. yeah. Yes. I wanted to offer a discount code um, in my shop. The shop is lelaboutique.com. Um, so that will all be in the show notes. But the discount code is a quilting life. And all through February 2021, you'll get 20% off in my shop. Yay. Yeah. That's, that's so awesome. awesome. Yes. That's so awesome. <laughs> yeah. All right. So Vanessa, are you ready for some questions that we have for you today? I am. <laughs> I'm ready. We're... This is our first time ask. I know. So yeah. this is like new for us this is new because for us we've too. never had a guest. So thank you for being our guinea pig, I guess. You're <laughs> welcome. <laughs> uh, all right. So mom, do you want to start? Yeah. We just thought that all the listeners would like to know how you got interested in quilting um, as a hobby and as a business and just kind of what what was your journey that brought you into the industry so we thought that would be a great place yeah. to start sure I have a really long answer for that because <laughs> I perfect yeah I feel like I have to start back and talk a little bit about my upbringing and my mom because right. I come from a long line of quilters but with my mom in particular I've always thought of her as sort of a Martha Stewart um, when Martha oh, Stewart that. came onto the scene when I was a kid, I remember thinking, she's basically my mom. Like, oh, you know, yeah. and um, my mom grew up on a ranch and she, um, so she, she's got a lot of grit and, you know, she'll get out the power tools and build things, but then she can turn around and put together like a beautiful flower arrangement. And, you know, she sews clothing, she sews quilts, like she just does so many different things. And in fact, growing up, she was in the industry. So typically I would see her get a big box of fabric or buttons or ribbon or just something that was new from a manufacturer. And she was tasked with coming up with something. They wouldn't even tell her what to make with it. So it was her job to do that. And I would just marvel at you know, the things that she would come up with. And sometimes they would use them in their booths at Quilt Market. And um, sometimes they would use it for other promotional things. But that was one thing that I watched her do. She also wrote, uh, she also wrote a lot of different books throughout my childhood. And the subjects would span in a lot of different areas in the craft industry. So, I mean, there were paper books um, in the 90s she was big into cloth doll making when that was big. And she was one of the leaders of that oh because goodness. there would be doll making seminars and she would be teaching classes and you'd see women from all over the world coming together to these events. So she also wrote books about that. And it's actually funny because, you know, when you're in like first grade kindergarten, your mom will typically bring cupcakes to your class. Yeah. No, my mom brought... <laughs> cloth dolls oh, and she wow. had like we stuffed them we painted the faces wow. we added hair we embellished them and it was so fun that's amazing it was amazing wow. and so I feel like we didn't necessarily have a lot of money growing up but my mom always found ways to incorporate magic into just everything that we did and she was just so good at coming up with fun projects like that oh my goodness, so she's given amazing. that background like I grew up playing in her fabric stash and I remember looking at fabric and just like loving the way it made me feel there was something so animate about it and I would spend hours just playing with the 
the different swatches and get, putting different color combinations together and just studying the fabric. And that's really where I fell in love with fabric. You know, that was my first love before quilting. I love that. Right. Yeah. This is so interesting because uh, we've both met your mom and I yeah. knew she sewed and quilted, but I didn't know. Oh, I didn't know most people yeah. don't without know. Her. Like, yeah, I would definitely not be here today without her and yeah. that wow. upbringing. It's just so amazing. And, you know, I didn't have an interest in quilting for a long time. That didn't happen till I was like 14. Yeah. And that only happened because my mom was working on a project. She had it laid out on the floor and it was this beautiful sunflower mosaic. And I looked at it and at the time I had really felt a connection to sunflowers because I just loved the symbolism and how they always follow light and right. they literally turn their heads to follow it all day long. So I just knew I had to make this. So she kind of set me out and showed me some of the basics with sewing and like ironing and then just kind of sent me on my way. And um, th the project she was working on was smaller. So I thought I would like to add a border. I'd like to maybe create some smaller mosaic blocks of my own and incorporate in the border. And I kind of just made it up as I went. It was so much fun. And the thing I really appreciate now about it is my mom didn't make me pick out any of my mistakes. She didn't like stop me and know this is the way you need to do it. She just kind of let me do my I thing and have fun. Mm -hmm. And so I learned to love quilting, just more of like the creative side of it rather than the technical side at first. And I think that was really important for me. So um, it's, actually really funny to look at the quilt now because <laughs> yeah I mean there are so many flaws in it but I just love it when I look at it because oh, it's just I think I've seen a pic did you share a picture I, on social I've media I've shared pictures oh, before yeah. yeah but you know it, I tried to do sashing before I even knew that's what it was called <laughs> right but like right. I did different widths and so it's just kind of a mess oh, I love that I love that but she didn't intervene that she didn't change anything yeah, that you were working she didn't make on. me actually right. calculate the math like yeah. she just kind of let it be right. you know and the technical stuff came with time yeah right. but that was my first experience now that being said <laughs> I never ever set out to do quilting as any kind of a career. That never occurred to me. Part right. of it is I feel like back when my mom was doing it, she didn't make a lot of money doing it. And in fact, she was a single mom. You know, my parents got divorced when I was 10. And so it it was her way of staying at home with us because that was so important to her. Right. And and yet, you know, we didn't make a lot doing it. And so you know, they're just growing up. I never looked at it as something that was a viable um, career path, yeah. you know? And so I kind of, I grew up, um, I'm a big nerd. So <laughs> I did really well in school. I love math. I love science. And I went into college planning to major in chemistry. Wow. So oh, that's amazing. Like, I know. <laughs> I'm like, what was I thinking? I do come from a family of scientists and engineers. So to me, yeah. I was like, I looked at a lot sense. of my family members and I thought, yeah, this really makes a lot of sense for me. And I love, love chemistry. Um, shortly thereafter, I realized I didn't necessarily wanting, want to do it every day. Right. And so college was kind of tough for me because I didn't really know for sure what I wanted to do. I spent a little bit of time as an English major thinking maybe I would want to go into editing Wow. Um, but there were so many papers and I'm such a perfectionist that it just took me so long to write these papers and I got really burned out. Yeah. yeah. So I ended up dropping out of college. I was married. And so I, there was also a part of me that just thought it would be good to work and just make sure we had like some income. And so I worked in banking for a really long time. And then when I had my daughter... Um, almost 11 years ago now. Oh my goodness. I, the instant I found out I was having a girl, I went straight to the quilt shop, oh, wow. of course, because <laughs> of course. I wanted to pick out some fat quarters. And coincidentally, that is the first time I ever came across pre-cuts. I saw oh, charm packs so close to the checkout counter. I was living next door to 
the Pine Needles shop in West Jordan. Oh, okay. So I went next door and I got my fat quarters, but then I saw this charm pack. And if you've ever seen pre-cuts, you totally understand. Like, I didn't know what I was going to do with it, but I had to have it. (laughs) So I took it home and I enjoyed like thumbing through and looking at all the beautiful prints and... And thinking about what I could make out of it, you know, could I do half square triangles? I could cut it in half and have little rectangles and make a coin quilt. I could do quarter square triangles. And I just, the thought that occurred to me as I was thinking about it is this. If I ever write a book, I'm going to write about these five inch squares. Wow. And it's such a funny (laughs) thought to have like in hindsight, but I'm realizing like, It's because of my mom and growing up and watching her write books that it was the most natural thought in the world to me. Like, I'm going to write a book about this someday, you know, and I fully believed it, was confident about that. And anyway, so I have my daughter and I quit my job. And at the time, my husband was in law school. And I don't know if you know about law school, but your first year, you're not allowed to work. Yeah. And so it was kind of stressful because I didn't want to go back to work. It was really important for me to be at home with her, um, but he couldn't work. And so we lived off student loans and that made me feel a little bit of pressure to like make money or do yeah. something, you know? So right. my daughter's napping three times a day. I started quilting and I was just thinking, I wonder how I could bring in some income doing this. So I started out... Um, doing a few magazine quilts here and there, which was great, but yeah. it's not necessarily like a, a reliable income. Yeah, so it's not consistent. It's right. not consistent. You really, right. I don't know if you could make a career out of it because yeah. you need to kind of space it out too. You can't really saturate the market with your stuff all the yeah, time, you know? Right. So um, I did a little bit of that. And then I thought, you know, maybe I'll open an Etsy shop and I'll sell quilts. Well, I soon found out that there's a lot of time that goes into making a quilt. It costs a lot of money. <laughs> right. And most people don't understand that and don't want to pay what it's worth yes. to have a homemade quilt. Right. So I sat on a lot of quilts for a while and they would sell here and there, but it was so slow and so inconsistent that I found that wasn't working. I added in the option for custom quilts and I got more that way, but then, then I found out I wasn't inspired by what other people wanted me to make. And so that ended up being such a chore that I just thought, okay, I want to just make whatever I want. Maybe what I need to do is make whatever I want and write the instructions. So then more people can make it, um, and they can make it in whatever colors they want. Right. So that kind of sent me down the path of pattern writing. Okay. And so I started doing that. The problem with that as well is, you know, having a following is so important in this industry because if you want people to buy your pattern, first they have to know who you are. Right. Exactly. So then, you know, I started exploring other avenues. I did a lot of free tutorials on other people's websites to help kind of get some recognition. And it just kind of started from there. And one spring, Quilt Market was in Salt Lake. I think this would have been 2011. Okay. And my mom and I went um, because my mom is still doing work in the industry. So we went and I was so inspired, you know, and I, if you've ever been to Quilt Market, you'd know just what an inspiring place it is. Yeah. That was my first Quilt Market too. Oh, 2011 what? was? Yes. yes. Oh, I went with Camille goodness. Ross Kelly. Oh, that my. is so crazy. Yeah. We both were at that same Quilt Market. Yeah. I went with her what? to help. I, I drove up there with her. Um, Cause that was Ruby, right? Yeah. yeah. I oh, still goodness. remember. I love that line. Yeah. Yes. And I believe yeah. I had made one of the quilts. That was she was yeah, showing yeah, in yeah. the booth. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So crazy. I went to Quilt Market and I was kind of surprised at what I went away with. I had gone in kind of hoping to make contacts, thinking, you know, I'd like to write a book someday, maybe. And I left um kind of with a lot on my mind in terms of fabric design because I noticed that a lot of the designers were younger. Right. And they didn't necessarily have graphic design experience or something that was like an obvious path to fabric design. So I kind of went away wondering, could I do that? I think I could do that, you Uh know? So 
at that point, the problem became, okay, my husband's super busy in law school. My baby is no longer sleeping three naps a day, you know, (laughs) dwindles away. It's just, you know, my day, like, when would I actually do this? How would I make this happen? It's not an option to go back to school, even online school, the cost and the time. Like, I just don't know how I would actually make this happen. So I became very overwhelmed and then I thought, okay, if I work on this five minutes a day, just five minutes a day, that's doable. Whether I, you know, go online and order a book about it or um, I had access to Photoshop and that's it. Yeah. So I was like wondering, you know, maybe if I get on and spend a few minutes just figuring out how to use the program, yeah. like little by little, that's going to add up to something, right? That's all I can do right now, but right. you know, and that's how it started. Wow. So yeah. after about a year of playing around in Photoshop, I sent in a proposal to Moda and I knew like Moda is where I wanted to be because yeah. <laughs> as I shopped, I, everything I loved right. was Moda. Yeah. And so I sent in a proposal and I got a response and it went a little something like this. <laughs> it said, you know, thank you for your submission at this time. We're not looking for any new designers. And I went, yeah, right. If, if it was good, yeah. they would make room. That's yeah. kind of what my thinking was at the time. So I scrapped that original collection, started over. Another six months later, I still remember the day I just had this random feeling like I should turn this in. I was like, all right, I'll turn it in. <sighs> and I got an email back the next day. Oh my goodness. And they said, oh, hey, we remember you. Oh. It looks like you're getting better. And I thought, oh, no. you know. <laughs> and they said, actually, your timing is great because we're wow. looking, we're putting the lineup together for the spring collections and we'd love to give it a shot. Go ahead and turn in all your stuff. And I just about died from yeah. shock. And, yeah. and then it, that quickly turned to horror, realizing <laughs> like, oh, no, like, I'm going to turn in my files and they're just going to go, Hey, come look at, look at this girl. Like, look at her files. I'm like, Oh no, they're going to figure out I'm an imposter and I don't know what I'm doing. You know? So, um, luckily as we all know now, like they are so wonderful to work with at Moda and you know, they never made me feel that way. And, um, I still wonder if I, if I turn in my files, if they're like, Oh, she's still you know, doing this or oh, no. Your I don't know, but, amazing. but that's oh. where it started. And that oh. was so huge, you know? Yeah. Um, and even back then I still didn't really have much of a following, but it's like little by little you like you work and it grows oh, yeah. and you just, you work hard and yeah. you know, there's a lot that's happened in between then, but that's really how I got started on the yeah. path. Yeah. Wow. I love I, I love, love that, that perseverance where you didn't just give up with the original. No, you went back to work and you designed something new. And I love that. I Thanks. love that part of your story that you kept going. Like you've always kept going and creating and and just doing more. I think that's awesome. Yeah. Well, thanks. I feel yeah. <laughs> very fortunate because I feel like there are other talented designers oh, so who aren't many. given the opportunity. Yeah. You know, and I look back at my first collection and I'm, I cringe a little, but, but I'm like <laughs> so grateful that they gave me a shot yeah. and I have really tried to make the most of that because I want to, I want to be here. You yeah. know, I want a place at the table. Right. Yeah. I yeah. love that. Oh, I love it. It's, <laughs> it's I, so interesting to hear your story and, you know, just like even compared to our own and just right. how we all came, you know, into this. And that's so interesting to me that everyone's path is not the same. It's different and it's unique. And that's what makes each of us, you know, you know, a different, and we all have our different stories and it's so cool to hear yours. I love Thanks. that. Yeah. <laughs> it's really fun because we we I feel like I knew bits and parts of that story but not the whole thing yeah so yeah that's is, when I was listening I'm right. like wow like there's little things that I relate to in, right. in our path but so much of it was different too right. so I love that it makes everyone just unique and yeah. you know different and yeah that's awesome so, um, so, should we move on to another yes, question? Yes, I have. Can I go with the yes. next? I one? promise my you answers go. will be shorter. <laughs> no, <laughs> well, because I, I can't promise that. that. We want to. We want to know everything. So, so, what is your typical? Would you say day in the life of you know mom? 
you know, business owner, Mm -hmm. quilter, designer? What's kind of like, yeah, your layout for that? Well, it's my busy. life, yeah, it's, it's very busy. I have two kids. They're eight and 10 they're so and cute. I'm, I'm divorced now. And so yeah. I'm a single mom. I'm kind of back like to where my childhood was, you know, there's a lot I relate to with my mom, but, um, luckily I have a really, really supportive ex-husband. Um, yeah. he lives nearby and that's a recent move. And so he's really good at helping with the kids. Um, we, he has the kids for one whole week and then I have them a whole week. So that's awesome. So my schedule is very different from most people's, but, um, the weeks when I have my kids, I will typically get up at six in the morning and I start out with a workout. I love working out and it's so necessary for me. I just feel like it's, it's a big stress reliever for me. I agree. So that's something that's pretty consistent. Um, and then, you know, after my kids get off to school, it, there is no like <laughs> typical thing, but I would say yeah, I, most days I have to make a run to the post office. I have orders that I process or like sometimes they're from my website. Sometimes they're distributor orders. Um, so there's usually a lot of that in the morning. And then usually in the afternoon I've gotten, you know, a load of laundry switched or whatever. And right. then the afternoon is really when I try to get down with the work and that just varies you know it depends yeah. some weeks I'm working on new fabric designs and I'm on my iPad drawing and and going back and forth between the computer and making the repeats or you know this next week I need to start designing quilts for the next fabric yeah. collection so I'm going to be spending a lot of time doing that but you know it just varies like this week I've been um, still piecing quilts in the new f- Christmas collection. I finally finished the last one and got that shipped off to the quilter. Oh, awesome. And then I've been, I've been meaning to de-stash for so long. So I, <laughs> I, I gave myself the rest of this week to kind of start cutting up fabric yeah. and get Which that Which is a going. lot of work. Yeah. Of yeah well, and it keeps going to the bottom of the list because other things get in yeah, front of it. Right. So the day to day just totally varies, varies. you know? Right. And then of course, when my kids come home from after school, <laughs> Um, I just try to be done with work and it's helped a lot to have them, um, at their dad's sometimes because then it just makes me realize like, okay, I need to give them all my time while they're here Yeah. because next week they're going to be gone and I can work as much as I want or do whatever. Right. I love that. So, so is that kind of your stopping time when the kids are home, when they get home from school, then you're done with work for that day? I try really hard. Sometimes it's like with certain deadlines, like, right. sorry, kids, you got to go play on the <laughs> yeah. Xbox. I got to keep doing this or yeah. whatever, you know, but I, I try to not to do so it too much. much. <laughs> yeah. But I try to give myself like some grace in that department. Yeah. You know, I totally yeah. relate to that <laughs> <laughs> because yeah, sometimes it's, yeah, you have a specific deadline. And that's what we talked about this on an earlier podcast. Right. You know, fabric line deadlines are specific. You know, mm-hmm. quilt deadlines are specific. We're not doing those things all the time. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, sometimes the kids, they, yeah. I try to but, make it more of an exception to the rule, yes, but I right. do allow it, you know. Yeah, right. But I love that, you know, for the most part, and I feel this way too, we really put the effort to put our kids um, first. Cause that's like, like what's so important. And, mm-hmm. yeah. but yeah, I love that you have like that system and that it all works out for you. It so. helps a lot. And I realize like most moms don't get a break Yeah, like that. And so it's really nice at times. Yeah. Yeah, definitely it helps with the balance. Yeah. So I had a question kind of related to this just because I know that I think it was the summer before last you took a lot of time off and you did some traveling and I was just thinking how did she do that how did oh. she get her <laughs> business uh, because I would love to I would I think it would be amazing to have a month off and just mm-hmm. you know, so how did you do that I just want to <laughs> know it was the best accident ever so I'm trying to remember um so in the summers, my ex-husband and I generally had the arrange- arrangement of two weeks on, two weeks off, because he was living up four hours away. Right. So in one of my little two-week periods when I didn't have my kids, I planned a trip for myself to go to Alaska and see my cousin for like five days. And then I figured I'll get work done the rest of the time. Right. Well, I had that plan 
And then my <laughs> friend comes to me and she says, hey, uh, oh, your kids just left. You want to come to Paris with me? <laughs> and I was like, wait, what? What did you say? <laughs> and um, she's like, yeah, you know, um, hotel's covered. We can get wow. your buddy pass. Her husband worked for the airline or works for the airline. And um, it was just one of those things I couldn't say no to. Right. And when I really looked at it, I was like realizing none of my work needs to be urgently done. I can come up with stuff for myself to be really busy. But as I looked at the individual things I would have been working on, like they could wait or not be done at all. Right. So I went and took the trip. And then um, my kids came back for a couple weeks and like we had planned other things to go do. And so it ended up that I had this whole month where I didn't work at all. And the most amazing part of it is it didn't affect me at all. Wow. And it's, you know, just the, I, I lucked out because generally in the summer, there aren't any super urgent deadlines. Yeah. Like it's just how right. it is. Right. Um, so I was like, wait a minute, you know, how is it that I was able to do that? I thought I'm busy and can't afford a break really. And right. the truth was I could, yeah. it was priorities, you know? Yeah. And like, it was funny because then the next chunk where my kids left to be with their dad, I got my tonsils out. So there was another two weeks yeah. that I had budgeted to be not working. And so I feel like that whole summer, like it somehow just turned into me taking the whole summer off right. with the occasional like thing here and there yeah. with work. But it just, uh, here's the thing that I've realized and this kind of ties in. If I have a month to do something, I take all month to do it. Yeah. If I have a week that to do me. something, <laughs> I get it done in a week. And right. so th that's really kind of what was confirmed through that whole thing. Like, yeah, which makes me think, gosh, I was really like wasting time yeah. or just not managing it as well as I could have and, and factoring in like the fun. Right. And so since then, I have been very motivated to keep doing things like that. And, yeah. and, and the other thing I've had to start doing is say no to more opportunities. Right. You know, I love that you brought that up. It's yes. so, it's like, especially you talking about taking time off, it's so healthy for you. And it's mm -hmm. actually, it's okay to say no. Uh, it's okay to say no to things. And that's actually healthy as part of the process. So yeah. that's important too. Thanks. Yeah, I love that too. <laughs> I actually listened to a podcast this weekend. He said, when somebody asks you to do something, don't give them a yes or no answer right away. Mm -hmm. Say, let me, you tell them, let me check my calendar and get back to you. And then you really think it yeah. out. You know, That's I love that. Let me check so, my calendar. <laughs> be, but no, yeah, like, because but you don't. True. Yeah. Yeah. You need to. It's yeah. been a reality check. And I, it made me realize that for so long, I've been wanting to build momentum in the industry that I haven't said no to anything. And I've, yeah. of course, like anything I can add in the pipeline, because the other thing is with this industry, most of the things I'm working on today, I'm not going to see a paycheck for at least six months. Exactly. Right. And so, you know, when I first got divorced, I was like a little panicked and thinking, I got to put as much in the pipeline as I can. Yeah. Right. So I just grew to kind of, get used to be working all the time. And like, I lived with kind of a scarcity mindset. Like I got to make sure I have enough. And then after yeah. a while that summer, I realized I have enough. Right. I'm doing okay. I can actually say no right. to some things because I also realized I was saying yes to things that I dreaded yes. and didn't really want to do. And not yeah. that they were bad things. Like I just, it was too much on my plate. Yeah. I yeah. So agree with that. it's, it's been a really, really good thing for me. And it's something that continues to be my goal, like to say no to more things yeah. and to just get that balance. Right. Yes. I love this. We've talked about this subject so much and it, yeah. it's so good and it's refreshing. It's good to hear your perspective hear your... on it for sure on yeah. the time management thing. Right. And, you know, what's important and what's, you know, not. And yeah. So, yeah. Awesome. So, I have been to your lovely abode, your house. <laughs> I have too. And have you really? I, when I picked up her, your sewing machine. <gasps> when you, you yes, I, yeah. I've talked about, people have asked about my sewing machine. And I think I mentioned it worked out perfect because <laughs> Vanessa was like, hey, I've got this sewing machine and I love it. It's, I love the Juki that I got from you. So thank you for that. Yeah. But, yeah. um, so yeah, you have seen her I house. Have. It's well, beautiful. Something I love about Vanessa is she has taken her home 
And you've basically completely re redone, I mean, redone the whole thing, new flooring. And you were like all a part of that process. Like yeah. you did like you and your mom, your mom mm-hmm. even helped you. And so do you typically, have you always loved DIY? Does that, <laughs> <laughs> she's shaking her head no. From how <laughs> creative and hard, like you said, with your mom, with the power tools. And do you think maybe you get that a little bit from her? Because really I was impressed when I went to the house and saw everything that had been done. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. Do you well, <laughs> enjoy that or? <laughs> well, I do somewhat enjoy it, but, uh, also, I really enjoy hiring someone else to do stuff yeah. now. Um, no, so I bought a fixer-upper about three years ago. Yeah. It'll be three years in April. And I will say growing up with my mom is a big part of why I would feel confident buying a fixer-upper. But also my friend Katie. She oh, okay, is amazing. Katie. And she came and looked oh. through the house with me. And there were a few things that sort of... I gave her the side eye about, you know, and she's like, no, 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 we can fix that. We can fix that. And she's also really good with power tools. So she was like, oh, don't worry. We can take that off. We can fix it. You know? Yeah. So I was like, I felt like I had support in the decision to do a fixer upper. And so when I bought it, um, I had been living with my mom and stepdad at the time. So I had sort of a cushion where I had an empty house for a month Yeah. and I made the most of it. I ripped out all the flooring in the house, um, which was awful. That yeah. was the worst ha- part, the most oh work of goodness. all oh, of yeah. it. But, you know, because if you're going to add floors, it has to be completely clean and flat, you know, and yeah. sometimes there's layer upon layer. And anyway, so we we did that. We took wallpaper off, got it wow. cleaned up a bit, and then my mom and Katie helped me put in a continuous floor throughout the whole house, but we laid it all ourselves. And when it all lined up in the hall, we were like, yes, you know, (laughs) we were so happy about that. And so we did that. We painted all the walls, all the ceiling, everything. Um, because you know, of course those are harder projects to do when you're actually living there. So we, we thought let's get those two done and then everything else can be while you're living eventual. Right. So since then I've actually hired a lot of it out. (laughs) So, you know, it's beautiful. It's thank you. Amazing. Yeah. It really came together and I actually love the layout of your house. It's a great layout. Yeah. There's great space. There's, you know, tons Tons of space for everything. I love that extra yeah. bonus office space. Oh, that you absolutely. Have. That sold yeah. me. There's like a front kind of a living room that yes. I've turned into my studio. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah. I've added yeah. You have I, the built in. Well, I hired in. someone, yeah, to do built ins yeah. and he did like a custom barn door. Like it's Yeah. It's yeah. just looking really nice. It's beautiful. And the and your kids' rooms are adorable too. They're just I mean, you always there's the cutest quilts in them and so thanks. It's yeah. so fun. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. And you got your house like repainted too. Right? Oh, I painted the exterior. Like I always have my giant master list of like what's next, yeah. you know? And so little by little I'm checking yeah. them off. Yeah. I love that. I love that. So, so what, cute. so what is next? Oh man. You know what? After COVID <laughs> and a summer of I living. I know. Oh, do you know? Is it the pool? Yes. <laughs> it's the pool. But, so, I mean, the summer it gets to be like 111, yes. oh, you yeah. know, it's very similar to Vegas, similar, maybe yeah. slightly cooler. Right. But, um, it's it gets so warm hot. There. It's yeah. very hot. And then, you know, with COVID and not being able to go anywhere, I just thought I need a pool. It's like jump to the top of the list. So that's right. Fun. That's what I'm working on. Yeah, not, not me personally. Right. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> awesome. Well, is there anything else that you would want to share with anybody that you have coming soon or um, any, any projects? Well, when does Christmas morning ship? Because it's still... Yeah, um, Christmas morning is showing right now to showing shops. right now to shops. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that will actually ship in May. Ships in May, okay. and uh, smoke and rest is April. So those oh, are pretty close both together. Really close, but yeah. they're so completely different. Yeah. Christmas is kind of its own animal. Totally. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, I would always say if you are interested in fabric, you should really talk to your shops about yeah. reserving some because shops really appreciate the input they have a really difficult choice of deciding what comes into their shops and so 
give them input, you know? Definitely, yeah. Don't be afraid to tell them that, Mm -hmm. you know, you're really anticipating a certain line that's coming out. So Mm -hmm. for sure, yeah. Yeah, and it's been even crazier with COVID. You know, a lot of fabrics have been delayed and... Mm -hmm. Selling out very quickly. Selling out quickly. Mm -hmm. So if you want something, let your shop owner know that you want Mm -hmm. it and get it when you can. Yeah, Yeah, I've had issues even like with this quilt behind me with Spring Fling. Um, This blue polka dot that I used as the background is gone. Like people are wanting to use it for backgrounds and it's gone gone. already. And it hasn't even been in shops that, you know, that long. So really, like if you like something, reserve it, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Make sure, sure you get some extra yardage. I've heard you talk about that. Like buy it, you know, something for the right. background, the yeah. border. Like think about that now because right. once it's gone, it's gone. It's gone. Yeah. It's not reprinted for yeah. sure. Yeah. I know that I ordered a bolt of, I think it's this print. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. And uh, when I ordered it, a lot of the others weren't available. Yeah. I was just grateful to get that. But And I know that our Balboa collection, the warehouse, it's gone. You can't yeah. order any of the prints. So, yeah. yeah that's also good on Folktale, I did the same thing I needed for the sample quilt. I needed some more yardage and I mm-hmm. hurried. And luckily there was some left still in the warehouse. But yeah. right now, yeah, it would be very hard to find. So, yeah. yeah. Is, is that like... <laughs> Uh, is that typical, like even before the pandemic, that oh. fabric would sell out that fast? Or is that because so. it's been an uptick? In- but Not- with, with Moda, though, where they only do one printing, yes. right. it is one of those things where you eventually, gotta, if you like it, you better grab yeah, it. Yeah, it'll right. be eventually. sold out. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. yeah, they don't do reprints of collections. Right. That, Not if they do, it's very rare. So. Right. Yeah. But I feel like it has been accentuated with the pandemic. Yeah. And so. even talking to Moda, uh, just a lot of fabric is selling and that's that's right. awesome. You know, yeah. so So quilting's like a on the upswing right now. So what you're cool saying. Cool new thing, okay. Billy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well people are stuck at home. Yeah. yeah. You know? And yep. so thank goodness for quilting. Like yeah. I remember when COVID first hit, I I thought, thank goodness I'm a quilter and I'm, yes. I'm good being home. Right. Like, well, yeah. Right. You know? And also to share something with your daughter and, you know, so there's just so many fun things and just having that is, yeah, it's like a saving grace almost to yes. be able to have quilting Absolutely. for you to do. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. So your next collection will be like a market time collection mm-hmm. release. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So about May is okay. when I'll be able to start showing people. Oh, End of May, okay. exactly. I would guess maybe. Yeah. I don't know if they'll move that. Yeah. Okay. That is interesting. Yeah. I know that's one thing is we're sad we haven't been able to meet up at market. I know Vanessa and I have a lot of fun <laughs> adventures in every city we go to and I've missed that. So uh, maybe in the near future, we'll see. Maybe not. Yeah. But I guess we're yeah. hoping there won't be a spring market this for year, sure, but we're no. hoping maybe. for Houston. Maybe yeah. Houston, guys. Maybe. We'll maybe. see in the fall. Yeah. So, yeah. Right. Well, we just appreciate you coming and doing Taking this. the time to come down yeah. here and join us in the podcast and just tell, um, you know, tell all the listeners and viewers about yourself and about your journey. And I know that everyone will love and appreciate this, that you're doing this. So... Yay. <laughs> well, thanks for having me. Oh, we're so grateful. And don't forget, Vanessa has a discount code, a quilting life. And we'll put a link to her shop. Mm-hmm. So 20% through mm-hmm. the month of February. Yep. Off anything. Yeah. And yeah, we'll have links to all of her patterns that we that she shared here today. Below the video and in the show notes. And in the show and, notes, right? Yeah. And our next podcast, is it going to be... It uh, is March 1st, Monday, March, March 1st. 1st. Okay. That's so crazy. Crazy. I, I actually yeah. have one more thing. Oh. And this is kind of an inside <laughs> joke with Billy and I. Oh, okay. But let me grab it. A couple podcasts. Here. Okay. She's <laughs> grabbing something out She's of a bag. She's grabbing right something now out of a bag. <laughs> I'm sorry, this is supposed to be a joke? Because oh. this is the best joke I've ever seen. Wow. It's a so, red velvet baby mini cake. Baby cake. So uh, <laughs> before the um, new year, I had promised to bring <laughs> cake in celebration of the new year. And um, no, actually, that's 
you <laughs> sorry i'm calling you out but you promised to bring cake for the 20th episode oh, for whatever reason right. i thought you yes. thought that was significant but this is the 21st episode thank but you you, for, but you forgot it the 20th okay. thank you billy i forgot it in the 20th so i brought cake and awesome. i thought what better of a time to bring cake than when vanessa is visiting us so yes i'm very glad that you were late an episode yes so beautiful we have cake you guys i promised and here it is yes so, but yes, so our next episode will be March 1st. March 1st. And yeah. yeah, so we're so appreciative of Vanessa coming by. And yeah, thanks yeah. so much for stopping by. Thank you.